Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my name is Debbie, I am Debbie Drama. Today I've got some more books for you. In a bit of a twist, I've got two books for you by the same author, Long Barrow by Mark Morris and Fiddleback by J.M. Morris. I know it says Mark Morris and J.M. Morris but they are the same author and I know they are because my parents know the author. <laughs> know the author, know his wife and even babysat his kids at one point. He even wrote a note to my parents in the front of this one. They're very different books, but also similar in a way. Both of them have got like that mystery kind of feel to it. Uh, they're very, very good books. I'll start off by saying that. I'm going to start off with Long Barrow because it was the first one I read. It took me ages um, to kind of get along and read these books because I was in that place of thinking, am I going to look at Mark really differently once I've read these books? And to be honest, I kind of do. But mainly on the idea of where on earth did he come up with it? Because I remember his wife now once saying that sometimes you can't sleep next to him knowing that he gets a lot of his ideas from his dreams and she's wondering what on earth is going on in his head. Longborough um, was published in 1997 for the first time. This one was written for his daughter, Penny. Um, <laughs> having read it, I was just like, if I was Polly and, you know, my dad was wrote this, I'd be a bit weirded out by the fact that it was dedicated to me. Just because of how weird it is. Long Marrow. I'll read you the blurb for this one. If you run round the church seven times in an anti-clockwise direction, you'll wake the seven sleepers. The sleepy Yorkshire village of Long Barrow looks normal enough, but David Wisher finds a place steeped in the stories and beliefs of the past. Of all the legends that surround Long Barrow, one above all fascinates David, the story of the seven sleepers defeated in an ancient battle and trapped throughout centuries, their evil powers dormant. Red Cap, Uther, Vinegar Tom, Gerenius, Shuck, Piewocket and Cullen. Together they spread terror, pestilence and destruction. And now, because of David's unwitting actions, they are stirring once more. I like the fact that it was set in Yorkshire because I could kind of see places from like around here because I know he's local. But yeah, so it was nice reading it and being able to read about the Yorkshire villages and stuff and thinking I kind of know where he got that inspiration from as he was describing like the town centre and stuff it was just like I can think of a couple of places um, where that description would fit so I could almost place this in a local town and imagining it happening there uh, yeah so as you can hear this with the seven sleepers and things it's got a bit of a fantasy to it it's definitely a thriller it's, um, Clive Barker. I'm actually reading a book by Clive Barker at the moment, so that'll be on its way. Um, but it, Clive Barker um, says that he's one of the finest horror writers at work today. This one... I guess it's got a bit of a horror element to it, but at the same time I found it kind of more mystery thrillery. It's not like there wasn't any point when I was, like, scared. Um, but to be fair, though, a lot of the times I was just, like, thinking... It's one of the things where at times I thought I knew where it was going and then it did a complete 180 on you and went in a completely different direction. It's kind of like watching like a soap opera. There are so many characters that you meet because they're trying to explain this idyllic little Yorkshire town and then it goes into what is essentially the destruction of the, this idyllic Yorkshire town. So you're seeing lots of different points of view and you're trying to work out how it does all end up together. You're mainly concentrating on David and his mum, Susan and David. Um, it even says part one is Susan and David. And as you go along, you start getting different points of view thrown in. Like there's the um, drunk doctor whose wife has died. There's just lots of different characters that you can look at. You're seeing how all the stories fit together. And then you're also trying to work out if the story of the seven sleepers because you hear so much in regards to like this local town legend and then you've also got is it the guy who works at 
can't remember if he works at the post office or it's just a shop in the town centre where you've got this guy who seems to have some sort of magic healing abilities and you're just trying to figure it all out and you really look into the history of the town as well so it's really really clever it does feel weird to be reviewing a book of someone who I know a lot of people might say I'm biased I don't think I am and you'll understand that when I go into the next one but yes so Long Barrow if you like a good um, horror type story you'll probably find it in this even though um, for me it was more on the thrillery side of things there's definitely lots of twists and turns in there yes yeah, so that's Long Barrow by Mark Morris the next one is Fiddleback oh, this one was a frustrating read almost because it's again you've got characters that you're trying to figure out how everything fits and how everything works together um, in this one it concentrates from a female point of view which I think explains why he decided to go by J.M. Morris for this one so I'll, I'll read you the blurb anyway when Ruth Gemmell's younger brother Alex fails to return her calls she sets off to check up on him unable to find him in Greenwell the town where he has been living and teaching she begins her tentative inquiries she soon discovers the locals to be frustratingly unhelpful, while the eerie town holds more questions than clues. Why are the police so uncooperative? Why is Greenwell so dark and lonely? And who is the grey man school children saw Alex with not long before he went missing? As Ruth becomes concerned that something terrible has happened to her brother, events escalate mysteriously, dangerously out of control. Then, in one fearful moment, she is sure she glimpses the abusive ex-boyfriend she left behind in London, the man who caused her years of torturous pain. Too late, Ruth realises that her worst fears haunt her still and she's at the centre of a far darker nightmare than she could ever have imagined. Having read that, I've realised there's technically a spoiler in there, but you don't really realise it until you actually get to the end of the book. For me, um... It was an interesting one to start reading and I found myself concentrating on things that weren't actually... I'd say there were a lot of red herrings in this book. Little things, especially when you've got the title Fiddleback and you know when they do have mentions of Fiddleback spiders in there and the poison and all that sort of stuff so as I was reading it I was trying to figure out how the title made sense and how the spider in the story fit into everything and um, it just feels a bit of a spoiler to say that it's a bit of that the title in itself is a red herring. I don't think it's spoiling it by saying that the title is a red herring. Because it's a not a red herring in the way that you think it is. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. You have to read it. So you're looking at Ruth, you know, she goes you really look at the history of Ruth and her brother and their relationship and then the relationship with the ex-boyfriend which is constantly filtered throughout the book and when she catches that glimpse of the ex-boyfriend you know while she's looking for her brother that kind of sets everything off a bit more because you've got her looking for her missing brother then you're looking at um obviously the history of the relationship with the abusive ex-boyfriend and there's so many red herrings in that bit where you're just thinking well there were points when I was just thinking is he the abusive ex-boyfriend was she the abusive ex-girlfriend there are so many red herrings throughout this book to really really keep you on your toes and it's knowing which strand I guess to pay attention to because you've got so much stuff happening so many little kind of side stories in a way and then the ending, it's kind of frustrating, the ending, I guess. I actually had to reread certain parts once I'd gotten to the end, thinking, hang on a second, wait, what? Because <laughs> this one is one of those things where you've got all this normal stuff happening and then towards the end, you've got the big explosive, oh my god, I didn't see that coming. With this, I guess I should have saw it coming with everything else that was going on and how bizarre it was. And I imagine there would be some people out there who probably would have picked up on the clues all the way through, because um, I only noticed the clues once I got to the end and I was just like, oh wait, that explains that, and it explains that, and it explains that, and yeah, but there were so many frustrating moments when you really, really feel for the main character and you're really feeling for Ruth because you're thinking, 
how would I react if I was put in that position? Like, what would I do? And there's so many points where, you know, you think you're on the right thing, you think you finally figured it out, and then just something else happens, and you're just like, oh, I guess that blows that theory out of the water. <laughs> yeah, so this one's definitely more of a mystery. It's not so much horror. I guess I can imagine this one. To be fair, I can imagine both of them being films. To be honest, I think Long Barrow could probably work as a series because of how much stuff and how many characters you're introduced to. Fiddleback, I can definitely imagine as a film. Even on the back, it says, eerie, assured, and utterly compelling. This is a novel you will not forget. I won't forget this book just because of the things that went through my mind as I was reading it. Because there were points when I was just like, well, how does that fit in? And how does this fit in? And what does that mean? And what does that mean? It really, really gets you thinking, this one. This one is more than, I guess it's more entertainment, I guess. Because I remember, I remember the point when the cover of the book finally made sense because um, you've got an eye dripping with blood and then the eye of a snake and it took a while because I'll admit the snake kind of gets explained fairly quickly because I'll just I'll give you kind of like a bit of a what the beginning of this is basically they start off in London David has an accident when he starts having these weird dreams and he doesn't know what they mean or anything and he seems to be lost seeing a lot of snakes in his dream and um, he doesn't understand it and they inherit a beautiful Yorkshire house and with everything that's going on in London with them they're just like let's just go up see the house and decide what we want to do they fall in love with the house and they decide to stay up there and then um, it's when they finally see the house that David realises it's what he's been seeing in his dreams. It's the house he's seeing in his dreams and there's snakes kind of like on the gate like going into the house. But it's like a beautiful kind of grand house that they've inherited and then everything comes off that of them going into the village, you know, meeting people and then you've got people going missing and they're all trying to figure out what's going on and then you look at the relationship between David and the friends he makes whilst in the town. To be fair they're both clever books in different ways. Did I just say clever? This one is definitely more on the horror-y side of things I guess um, with everything that goes on in it. I don't want to say too much because so much stuff happens in it. It would be a massive spoiler for me to say anything beyond the beginning which is them inheriting the house. Fiddleback, there's just so, as I said, there's just so many red herrings in it. You find yourself picking up on stuff that maybe you shouldn't or maybe you should. And so as you're going through, it's just definitely a thriller. They're just such good books. And I thought it would be interesting to have a look at two books from the same author. I do have a feeling I may have just like exposed the world to the fact that J.M. Morris is Mark Morris. <laughs> I'm sure people figured it out. But yes, so we've got Fiddleback and Long Barrow very very different books but will definitely satisfy people who like thrillers and horrors and books that make them think I'll say that books that make you think so thank you so much for watching um as I said there are more books on the way I'm reading a book by Clyde Barker who um is actually got a quote on the bottom of this one so I well, probably I might actually do that one as two books as well because I've read another book by Clive Barker which I haven't talked about on here before. Well, I think that I've had a like, passing mention about that book before in Magica. And so, um, and then the one I'm reading at the moment is called The Great and Secret Show, I will say, in preparation for the Clive Barker video. Clive Barker's brain should be studied because the things he writes about, I've never read anything like them before. I'll say that. So that's in preparation for the Clive Barker video and I'll probably reiterate that in the Clive Barker video as well because the things he comes up with are ridiculous but in such a fabulous way. Thanks so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed already please do. I do put out videos every single Wednesday and if you put on those bell notifications you should get a notification when it uploads. I have been Debbie, I am Debbie Drama and I will see you next Wednesday. Mwah.